The last week's lock of the week, D Hack continues to hit. He is three and one in locks of the week. I am a miserable one and three. My one was a nice hit, yes, plus one thousand, but yes. you know, still, I'm I'm losing, man. I'm losing. I need a winner. I need early. a winner. It's this early. Week, D. It's early, buddy. I, I'm proud of, of the work I've done. I know that uh, Teddy G thought I was playing a little safe. I, I'm just kind of steadily, you know, doing the job. Get it done. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just get the job done. So I'm I'm one and three, and it's time for our lock of the week this week. And I'm I'm going to say this right now. I mean this is this is a this is an absolute master lock, lock of the week. Double lock the door. Oh no worries. Dead bolt it close. You're good to go. You ready for this one? I'm ready. My lock of the week that that can't miss, that will not miss. You know Taylor You're Gooch. Positive. Oh Taylor yeah. Gooch. He had a great run at the players. I remember that. Yeah. Taylor Gooch to make the cut is minus two sixty four. He's making the cut. I mean it's. It's already done. It's been said. Just go ahead and build the wing on the house. Done. I mean, it is done. 12 done. to 13 cuts okay. made over his last 13 starts. 17 to 19 cuts made over his last 19 starts. He's played in this event twice. He's made the cut both times. He's one of the best players in the world right now. The way yeah. he's playing, the consistency that's there. He's, ma he's making it to Saturday. Come on. I, I think you're, you're on to something there. Now, this is minus money, though, right? This yeah, is minus money. And this money. is the first one of those. This is, a, this is the first kind of favorite bet I'm picking okay. for lock of the week. But I need, a, I need a dub. I need a winner. He's just someone who looks more and more comfortable every time he plays. I have some friends that were down at TPC Sawgrass rooting for him. They had a little, little interest in Taylor Gooch's performance, and he played fantastic. He had a very good chance to win. was right there in the frame with JT and Bryson and Lee Westwood. I'm, I'm going to continue with the philosophy that has Stake me to a three and one record. Don't have to get fancy. So with don't this. get fancy, but I found another plus bet. So it's a little bit of, of risk involved. It's plus 280 for Tony Finau to finish in the top 10. This is Tony Finau. Plus 280. 280, who has 47 top 10 finishes in his PGA Tour career. Two of those at Mayakoba, where he has shot 65 before, and shot 66 before, and shot 67. Before. One of those top tens was last season. One of those top tens was in his first. I just think that this is a guy that we know, if he's on the golf course, he's almost always likely to finish very, very well. I think top ten Tony Finau, that isn't even going to be a nickname. Top ten Tony Finau. And that's not pejorative. What he, what he do now is finish in the top ten. Where I mean, he two, be now? Top ten. Two top tens and five starts at this event here. Correct. So if you were really diving into this, if okay. you were really dissecting this, you would be, in theory, up money if you made this bet every year. I see what you're saying. Over the five events that he's five played. Five times. He's two top tens here. Yes. So it's been a great Plus bet to this point. And you, now look at him. You'd be ahead. Now he's one of the best players in the world. You want to welcome in Jay Crouch? Let's welcome him in from Points Jay. Bet. Jay knows everything there is to know about numbers and betting. So, Jay, we are presenting our locks of the week. What were your thoughts on Taylor Gooch and Tony Finau? I love it. I love the bacon deadbolt lock special. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a win. You just need to put a need W a in the column. It's got kind of the scent of backing the Lakers money line against the Rockets or something just to get a W in. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think Taylor Gooch will likely make the cut. And then with Damon, I like it with the, I like bets that are just on the essence of the player. Like you're betting on Tony top 10 fee now to finish in the top 10. It's like betting on uh, Damon's guy, Clayton Kershaw, to choke in the playoffs or LeBron James to win the Eastern Conference back in the day. Uh, so you're just betting on the essence of the guy. And Tony, obviously, that's what he's famous for. So I love it. Tough, tough shot on Clayton. As soon as he mentioned the, the Dodgers, I was ready to like, leap out of my yeah. chair and joy that he, he got me in the right heart. He got me there. right there. All right. We'll get to some baseball uh, in a bit. But from a betting perspective, just how different is it betting on Brooks Kepka in majors where we know he's super locked in versus regular tour events? So Brooks Kepka is probably the most difficult golfer to price in the world just because you just don't know if getting good Brooks or bad Brooks week to week. And he is a guy where, you know, we price him similarly in majors as we do in PGA Tour events because it's hard to predict when he's going to turn it on. But I think the thing with Brooks in majors is in play. And if you see that it's good Brooks, then the price shortens very quickly. Brooks quickly becomes, if he's on, he's like Michael Myers in Halloween, where all of a sudden he's just locked in, just focused on the goal, seems it impossible to stop. And people always jump on Brooks in majors, uh, like at the PGA Championship, the US Open, where he started off really hot. People get on him very early. Jay, uh, this Abe answer thing's been kind of wild to watch this week. He was, I think he was plus 2,500 earlier in the week, and he's moved now to plus 1,400. He's, he's the favorite at this point with the likes of Justin Thomas and Brooks Koepka, even Victor Hovland in the field. What's happening over there at PointsBet HQ with this movement with Abe answer? 
Yeah, people love themselves some Abe Answer. He's been an incredible uh, riser up the odds board uh, with the odds shortening very quickly. And I think the thing with Answer is just that he's rock solid. Uh, 14th at the CJ Cup, a couple of top 10 finishes in the playoffs to end last season. He wins the St. Jude Invitational. He just doesn't really have any holes in his game. And I think he goes under the radar because, you know, he's not as big of a name like the guys you mentioned uh, in Thomas Kepka and Hovland. And then also, he's not part of this new school uh, where he's launching at 6,000 yards off the tee like Bryson does. He's just solid. He just works around the course. And I think that this course, which is a little bit shorter than normal and distance isn't as prized, that you know he has as good as, a chance as anyone to win. Jay, how unusual is this? We asked Teddy G a similar question yesterday, but how unusual is it to see someone move this much with big names in the field without injuries happening to some of the favorites? It's pretty, pretty extreme. It doesn't usually happen, particularly for a guy like Answer, who has been so kind of snugly put into that 30 to 1 range uh, consistently over the past few months. But, you know, a lot of sharp and smart people have been betting on Abe Answer and driving that price down. Uh, and so I think that there is something there. I think the course adjustment, which is often difficult to price into the opener, uh, but comes out throughout the week as you get closer, I think that's a big thing here with Answer, that the course is so suited to his style. Jay, there's a rumor going around NBC Sports HQ that you're saying <laughs> that the uh, great Lucas Herbert could be the next Tiger Woods in some capacity. Can, can you explain? Lucas Herbert, yeah, he's the next great thing. Uh, he's gone right past Mark Leishman and Cam Smith's hair as the best golfer in Australia um, after that win last week. Still not a lot of faith in him this week in terms of his outright odds. He is 125 to 1. Uh, but he showed a lot last week. Uh, we make him the favourite uh, in the Australian matchup this week against Matt Jones, where Herbert is a minus 154 favourite. The next great thing, obviously, I'm extremely biased here, being from Australia too. But uh, yeah, start watching Lucas Herbert. <laughs> so Lucas Herbert, the ne next ti Tiger, the next, you got it down. You write Tiger, that down. Next Tiger Woods. Woods, two O's in yeah, Woods. Yeah, yeah, two okay. O's in Woods. Uh, last thing, you, you kind of took a shot at D Hack earlier about the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> but we did want to look ahead at World Series numbers. For next year, I and mean, we're look ahead guys here. We like to look way ahead. Where are the Dodgers in terms of favorites to win it all next season? The Dodgers are favorites, uh, just as they are every single year and probably will be for eternity. That's why I feel like I can take shots at Clayton Kershaw uh, and because I'm not really picking on someone who's pretty low down the totem pole. The Dodgers, they are the most bet on team every year for us. They're always the favorites. They're always loaded. Um, this year, they had to deal with a lot of injuries and we're still very close to making the World Series. Um, but yes, we start them off as plus 500 favorites, just narrowly in front of the Houston Astros and the Chicago White Sox. And then Atlanta, uh, they come in as the ninth favorites, uh, despite winning last night and wrapping up the World Series. They're plus 1,400. At least we lost to the team that won it all. I can, you, know, you know what I'm saying? That happens in sports. I, yeah, it makes I, you feel I, a little bit better. You end up rooting for the team to beat <laughs> right. your team. Uh, hey, Jay, as we let you go, uh, I need you to find odds on if that's the most insane take of 2021, your Lucas <laughs> Herbert take. Get us <laughs> points bet numbers for next week, okay? <laughs> I'll do it. Lucas Herbert, watch out for him. He's the next big team. <laughs> Jay Crowser. Bring it, man. Jay Crowser is bringing it.